What's up, what's up, YouTube? It's Rasheen Taylor back with another little video. Uh, it is Friday, October the 20th, I believe, 2023. Uh, back with another little video. This is more so along the teaching side of things. Um, basically, as far as it's a lot of, I, I don't want. I don't want to start any controversy. I know people won't agree with this this video in particular. Um, a lot, everybody won't agree with this video and I get it completely. I understand. I'm not making this video to try to come against anybody or what you've been originally taught. Um, but I grew up in the Pentecostal church, oneness, apostolic and all of that. I actually attend one today my wife my myself my wife and my kids we attend one but i don't like i said in uh, one of my previous videos i don't necessarily believe uh as far as salvation receiving of the holy spirit um the gift of tongues i don't believe what they believe in particular as far as salvation and tongues and things of that nature um, I, like I said before, I, I began attending this church strictly because we visited and the love that we felt there, felt there was so genuine and real. Uh, they have the Pentecostal apostolic things that they live by, but they don't judge you for it. If you don't live by it as well, as far as dressing a certain way, talking and walking a certain way, uh, my, my tattoos, uh, I had long locks when I first started, I cut them because God told me to in particular, and also because I lost my dad. Um, but things of that nature, like they didn't treat us any different when we started going, when we visited the first time around and then we kept going, we kept visiting. I was like, okay, we, we were, you know, so we ended up joining the church, but strictly out of the love that we felt just from initially visiting. So me, my wife, myself and my wife, we are more so of the I don't even want to say non-denominational because they've made that a denomination now. We more so just say we're Christians, we're Bible-believing Christians, like that's it. Uh, I believe denominations divide the church. We A lot of people uh, separate themselves that way, like, oh, I'm so glad to be a Pentecostal. I'm so glad to be Baptist. I'm so glad to be Calvinist. I don't, I'm just so glad to be a Christian, a, a, a man who loves Jesus. I'm a flawed individual. I mess up daily. I even have thoughts that I have to repent for on a daily basis. But at the same time, I just love God and I just want to, you know, live for him while I while I still have breath in my body. Um, but this is more so along the lines of the evidence of the Holy Spirit. I don't want to I'm not here to try to change your mind about what you may believe, but I want to you to hear from the Bible what exactly it says about the evidence of the Holy Spirit in a Christian's life or inside a Christian person. Because I was always taught, you, Acts 2.38, Acts 2.38, Acts 2.38, um, repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus for the remission of your sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And I, it was just hammered into me growing up until my, my parents got out of the church and I I went to church. I was baptized at the age of seven, but it I just, I, I think it was like peer pressure. So I didn't really, you know, I didn't live for God after I got baptized at seven. Like I was in college, I was drinking, partying. Uh, but then I got with my wife, 2011, and she sat me down. We started going to church. She didn't force me to go to church, but it was like, that April of 2011, I like had an, an, an encounter with God myself. And it just so happens that's the month we started talking and we started dating that year. And end of that year, we got married. So it was like a conglomerate of things all happening at the same time. But we, we basically started going to church together. And I decided to sit down and read the, the entire Bible myself because I didn't want a pastor just randomly telling me this is how it is and this is how you need to think and live and breathe and be without me knowing for myself. So I sat down and I read the entire Bible for myself and I ended up going to Bible college, um, Grace Christian University, uh, took classes online. I got my I stopped at my associate's degree um, 
of leadership and ministry. But I still don't claim to know it all. I don't claim that my thinking is the only right way. I don't I don't want people to think that as well. I just want people to hear from the word of God itself. So I'm going to be reading from John chapter 3, verses 7 through 8. I'm looking over here at my notes right here. Uh, John chapter 3, verse 7 through 8. I'm going to just read this real quick. Um, so this is when Nicodemus came to Jesus asking him about basically salvation. Um, he, I'm going to start at verse 7. Do not be amazed that I told you that you must be born again. This is Jesus talking. The wind blows where it pleases and you hear its sound, but you don't know where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with everyone born of the spirit. So this is basically saying when a person truly gives themselves to Christ and they truly believe on Jesus unto salvation, you can't. You can't you can't see the Holy Spirit enter a person and begin doing a work in them and changing their lives. In the Pentecostal denomination, you're taught the baptism of the Holy Spirit comes. It's an outward expression of speaking in tongues. That's when the Holy Spirit has entered a person. That's when you've truly been saved. I've heard people Pentecostals say, no, we don't believe, you know, you get saved, but then the next week you start speaking in tongues. That's when you get saved and you're on your way to heaven, not when you first believed. And I've heard other Pentecostals say, no, you, you're saved at belief, but then the baptism of the Holy Spirit is when you speak in tongues and you're baptized. Like they, it's, uh, uh, it's basically they're putting the ball in your court, in your field, as far as uh, salvation is uh, something that you do instead of a God thing that God has done to you and done for you. Uh, but I, I tend to believe the what I was just speaking on as far as when a person truly has believed unto salvation, the Holy Spirit enters that person. And like it says here in John chapter 3, verse 7 through 8, the wind blows where it pleases. And you hear, you can hear the effects, you hear the sound, but you don't know where it comes from because you can't see it. So the same way it is when the Holy Spirit enters a person, you can't see the spirit enter that person. And that's why it says, so it is with everyone born of the spirit. Uh, I'm going to turn to first Corinthians chapter 12, verse 13, really quickly. Cause I have other supporting scriptures to back up basically what I'm speaking on. I don't want to, just speak on one scripture and, you know, hold that to be the end all be all. First, first Corinthians 12, verse 13, it says, for we were all baptized by one spirit into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, whether slaves or free. And we were all given one capital S spirit to drink. So basically, Every believer has been given the Holy Spirit. And I'm going to go, I wrote right here, baptism of the Spirit is when the believer comes to saving faith and be becomes joined with Christ. Um, I'm going to turn to Romans chapter 8, verse 9. Just another support in scripture for you all. Because this is more so what I believe. Because all my time growing up in the Pentecostal church and attending the Pentecostal church, I was I never felt complete because I hadn't spoken in tongues and or what I thought was tongues. Um that that's a different topic, different video, different day. But I I was like, man, I I was always chasing it like, man, God, why won't you complete me? Why won't it's like I was on this endless treadmill trying to chase after this one gift that everybody was talking about disregarding the other gifts of the spirit, but Tongues in particular, because that's what was hammered into me from each teaching at church. You know, so I was always only after that gift. Um, Romans chapter eight, verse nine. But yeah, always. Uh, and then you go up to the altar and you don't speak in tongues and you go back home, like feeling defeated and feeling deflated. Like, man, is this really of God? Like, why do I feel I'm leaving church feeling horrible? <laughs> like, because I didn't. Speaking in tongues like everybody else up here on, uh, at the altar. Uh, Romans chapter 8, verse 9. You, however, are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If indeed the spirit of God lives in you. 
If anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, he does not belong to him. So a lot of oneness Pentecostals believe that if you don't speak in tongues, you don't belong to God, period. And I'm like, that doesn't make sense, man, because I'm OK. An active believer, let's say uh, an, an individual comes to church, they go up to the altar, they repent, give their lives to Christ. They come to saving faith and believing in Jesus unto salvation. They accept that they they were a sinner. They, they, you know, been living apart from God and they want to turn their life over to him. They lift their hands and surrender and they do that at the altar. And like I said in um, John 3, 7 and 8, you can't see the Holy Spirit enter that person. But a oneness Pentecostal person would tell them, well, yeah, you did that, but you didn't speak in tongues yet. So you still don't belong to God. Imagine how that will make a person feel. I left church feeling like that a lot of the times because I hadn't spoken in tongues yet. I'm like chasing after this one gift, this one particular thing, because that's what they told me I needed to do to prove to everybody else that I was a part of the family, let alone uh, being baptized. Also that too. Uh, but I, I believe I more so believe, OK, it says you must be born of the water and the spirit. OK, Jesus says he's the living water and his spirit enters you at your point of belief. Um, a lot of people, they say, no, but that's just giving a person a license to sin. No, more so, I believe if a person has truly come to saving faith in Jesus Christ, you don't want to sin anymore. You do not want to indulge in these things. And that's how. I knew I was truly saved when my son died back in 2017 because I told God I was done with him. I was done with God. I was tired of living for God and I'm expecting my son to live. We're praying. I'm, I'm like doing everything possible, living for God. I'm like, you know what, God, I, I threw my hands up. I'm done with you. My son is dead. Like you supposed to take care of me as your son, as your a, 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 a follower of Christ. Why didn't you answer this particular prayer? And you let me watch my son die in my face. And I was done with God, or I thought I was. And I had completely just shut down uh, spiritually. I quit praying. I quit. Um, I wasn't physically going to church. I was more so on, on the phone doing Bible studies with just calling and listening in. Uh, but I was like, I'm done with all that. I'm, you know, I'm going to just do me. Like, I'm done with you, God. And... It didn't, it didn't, it didn't work out that way. Um, I thought I was done with God. Um, well, until one day I was at work and I just heard in my spirit, I mean, I'm literally just working, not thinking about God whatsoever. I heard, thank you, Jesus. And I was like, what? This, this, this don't make sense. I'm, I, I, so I tried to ignore it. I just kept on going with my day. And I just heard it again. Thank you, Jesus. And I just, I just let God continue to work on me throughout the rest of that day. And I gradually started coming back and started praying. Same thing with my wife. Same thing with my wife. Like we were done with God back in 2017. Mind you, I started this channel in 2015. You know, making videos and you know everything else. I was done. With, I thought I was done with God, but um, I. It's like he would not leave me alone. He wouldn't let me go. I couldn't. I'm like when once you're his, you're his. Um, and that's how I was like, okay, I truly have the. It was the Holy Spirit like lifting my spirit up, pulling me out of my spiritual grave that I felt like I was in. Um, what was it? It's another scripture. I didn't even write it down. Um, but it talks about. How basically, like, you're sealed with the Holy Spirit. Let me see. Let me see. I believe it was. Okay, here's another one. First John chapter 2, verse. First John chapter 2, verse 19. First John chapter two, verse 19. So it says, they went out from us, but they did not belong to us. 
for if they had belonged to us, they would have remained with us. However, they went out so that it might be made clear that none of them belongs to us. So basically, they were saying in this scripture that, you know, people were leaving Christ, leaving the church, leaving the body because they've never their hearts were never really with God in the first place, because when your heart is truly regenerated and you've truly been baptized in the Holy Spirit, you cannot just walk away from God like you think you don't have this uh, freedom that you think you do to just do whatever you want to do. Walk away from God. Jesus said no one can snatch them out of my hand. And so people be like, well, you yeah, they can't. But you can walk away from God yourself. You can. Man, I right hand to God. I tried. I you when when you've truly when you're truly a believer, even if things don't make sense to you all the way or you're confused about a specific topic in the Bible or you're confused about a certain aspect of God, you cannot just well, I'm I'm done with God. I see so many YouTube videos. Uh I used to be a Christian back when I was a Christian. Man, I'm telling you, like the you maybe thought you were, you maybe was raised in a church, you maybe went to church your entire life, but if the Spirit of God has not entered you truly, like if you have not truly believed to God unto salvation and truly repented of your sins and the, the Holy Spirit has not, has never entered you. And so it's like, People can say, oh, how are you going to tell me I was never saved and I was doing all this and that and this and that and this and that. But I'm telling you, if you if you truly are saved, you can't just walk away from God. I tried it. My wife tried. Our, we, we've we tried it. It does not work that way. It's like trying to escape a, a pool full of jello. Like you're not going anywhere. Even if no matter how you feel how angry you get at God, how confused you may get about the scriptures or God himself, you're not just going to freely walk away and God going to leave you alone if his Holy Spirit is living inside of you. Yeah, a Christian may end up in a backslidden state for a season, but I truly believe if that person has truly been saved, they'll come back to saving faith before God allows them to leave this earth or he'll give them time before they leave this earth on their deathbed or they're, they'll they'll eventually come back to Christ or come back to a true state of repentance, just like I did. If that true person has truly been saved, yeah, you may be mad at God for a season. Yeah, you may be confused with God about certain things. Yeah, you may not understand everything in the Bible all the time. Heck, I don't either. Like as far as the Old Testament stuff, like I'm still still learning. You never get a point to where you've mastered the Bible. Like it's always new revelation coming to you. Um, so John chapter 10, verse 28, I'll read this for you real quick. I'm sorry this video is so long, but I really have to make my point. I don't want to just throw stuff out there. Like it's coming just from my head and not from the Bible itself. So John chapter 10, verse 28, I'm actually in the book of John right now actually in my own studies. <clears throat> Jesus said, I give them eternal life and they will never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. My father who has given them to me is greater than all. No one is able to snatch them out of the father's hand. That includes yourself. You do not have more power over God, <laughs> whether you think you do or not. You, your free will is not more powerful than God. I'm telling you right now, I tried it. I lived it. It's not more powerful than God. <laughs> he will continue chasing you as long as there's breath in your body and as long as you have a heartbeat. I'm a witness. <laughs> oh, Ephesians 1.13. I don't know why my eyes didn't show me. I wrote the scripture down. Ephesians 1.13, and I'm going to wrap it up. Ephesians chapter one, verse 13. In him, you also were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and when you believed. So it's saying when you believed the gospel, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit. Sealed, locked is shut. You've been sealed with the Holy Spirit. I don't know how much more plainly you can put that or you can make it for a person. And granted, I get it. If you want to 
if your doctrinal beliefs won't allow you to believe the written word. I get it completely. I was in that same state. I didn't want to believe it. I didn't want to see it. In fact, I was writing papers in my in by in, co in college about why I didn't agree with what they were teaching me because it was more it was more so along these lines. And I was like, well, it doesn't make sense because this. I don't agree with this because of this. This scripture, this scripture. And I was using scripture, but you got to rightly divide the word of God, man. You you can't just like you will present this to a person and they'll come up with examples outside of the Bible, but stick to the scriptures, rightly divide the word of God. Let the Holy Spirit sit down and teach you himself because I'm telling you he will. Um, to wrap it all up, Galatians chapter five. Um, this is what I believe because they say speaking in tongues is the evidence of the Holy Spirit. However, you have people that can't even talk. You have um, mute people in the world. You have disabled people. Uh, people get saved on their deathbed. Um, so, oh, yeah. Real quick, real quick. My bad. This just came into my, sp my spirit. Romans chapter 10, verse 9. If y'all like these teaching videos, just let me know. Because I could, I could walk you down some scripture like all day. Like, this is what I do. I, I, I really feel like I have a teaching spirit. Uh, teaching gift. <laughs> Romans chapter 8. No, Romans chapter 10. All right, here we are. Romans chapter 10. All right, Romans chapter 10, <clears throat> verse 9. If you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. A lot of oneness people don't like, a lot of Pentecostal oneness people, apostolics don't like this because they say, no, you have to confess, uh, repent, be baptized, and speak in tongues to be saved. But what does the Bible say? Romans chapter 10, verse 9. If you confess with your mouth, I'm going to keep reading down to uh, verse 13. Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. One believes with the heart, resulting in righteousness. And one confesses with the mouth, resulting in salvation. For the scripture says, everyone who believes on him will not be put to shame, since there is no distinction between Jew and Greek, because the same Lord of all richly blesses all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Uh I'll just leave that at that, and that's what the Bible says. I'm gonna go. To, I'm gonna wrap this up. It's going kind of long. Galatians chapter five, real quick. Um, Galatians chapter five. This is what I say is the evidence of the Holy Spirit. Aside from what people believe is outward expressions of the gifts that people talk about, as far as tongues and all this other examples outward expression to prove to everybody else that you're saved i believe you only have to prove to god that you're saved uh and that is found in galatians chapter 5 when you could tell that person has truly been saved and baptized in the holy spirit man i'm really let me see i'm really showing how much i use my bible app <laughs> uh, galatians chapter 5 galatians is not really a long book anyway but uh <clears throat> here we are galatians 5 the true evidence of the Holy Spirit is what I'm about to read. It is the fruits of the Holy Spirit. And it's Galatians chapter 5, starting at verse 22. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. The law is not against such things. So it's talking about when a person exhibits love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control after they have truly been baptized in the Holy Spirit and, 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 and taken upon the living water of Jesus, uh, repented of their sins and came to true saving faith, they will exhibit these characteristics in their daily lives. Yeah, like I said, people mess up, people make mistakes, people sin, and, but they don't live in that. They don't live in comfort in their sin. They don't, they don't, they're not, they're convicted when they sin. They live more so 
in love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. Um, so that's more along the lines of the evidence of the Holy Spirit living inside a Christian, a true Christian. Because you can't tell me a woman, a woman from off the street can walk in church and she repents, you know, uh, gives her life to Christ that day, but she didn't she didn't speak in tongues or or get baptized in water, which I believe baptism is an outward expression like, hey, I'm joining the family. I don't believe it's mandatory to be saved, but I believe, hey, Jesus got baptized, so why not? I'm not against it. I got baptized. My wife got baptized, but I don't believe it's mandatory. I don't believe speaking in tongues is mandatory because let's go back to what I was saying. Let's say a woman from off the street comes into church. She was a prostitute. She ain't, she don't even got the best clothes on right now, but she goes up to the altar, altar, lifts up her hands. She cries out to God. I'm a sinner. I need salvation. I believe on Jesus unto salvation. I repent of my sins. I believe if that woman truly meant that, she she got saved in that at that point. And let's say she walked out of church and died, got hit by a car or something and died crossing the street after she did all that. Is she going to hell because she didn't speak in tongues? Is she going to hell because she didn't physically get baptized in water? I don't believe that because John 3, 7, 7 through 8, you know, Jesus is the living. Jesus said, be baptized and believe on the name of Jesus. Believe, believe on the name of the Lord until salvation and you shall be saved. Jesus, I believe Jesus is the living water of the baptism that you accept and you receive at salvation. Uh, you believe on him and, then, and believe on the name of Jesus unto salvation and you're saved at that point. Like I don't believe because a person didn't speak in tongues or because they didn't get baptized in physical water that they're just going to hell because, uh, you know, if they die right away after confessing their sins and repenting. I don't I, I just can't accept that. I don't believe that. I know a lot of people may have issues with this video and I get it completely. Like I said, I'm not making this to step on anybody's toes, but I just want any anybody that's new to the faith to just truly understand what's in the Bible. Uh, understand denominations will teach you according to their denominational and doctrinal beliefs, but always read the Bible for yourself. Get you a study Bible, rightly divide the word of God. A lot of pastors, they will teach you only according to what either traditions of their uh, denomination, things that they've been taught. And I mean, I don't believe they're doing it in a malicious way, but they're just doing what they all have already always known. Uh, but read the Bible for yourself, man. Uh, I read the Bible. It took me, I think, like five or six or seven months to read it completely. But I read it for myself. Like I said, I don't claim to know it all. I don't claim that my argument is the end all be all. I don't claim to be 1000% right. You should only listen to me. I don't claim any of that. I just want you to see the scriptures for yourself. Um, and <laughs> sorry this was so long, but thank you for watching and God bless.